What's going on YouTube? So today we're going to be talking about the Aqua Illumination Prime HD. Uh, one of the things that I really like about this uh, light and what really drew me to it first was the design. Um, I love the way the light looked before I even looked into what the light can do and um, all the features that it had. Um, I really fell in love with the look of the light. Um, you know, I have a rimless tank and so the real slim design, the sleek design of this light really complements um, just the look of the rimless tank. It's, you know, nice low profile light fits very well on the tank. So one of the key features about this light that really drew me to the light was the venting slots that are on the rim of the light that go around the edge. Uh, really like the look that that gave. It's a it, very modern look. That's something that I'm big into. I'm, I'm really into the modern look and feel. Um, and the fact that though you know those slots are beneficial to the light you know it really was an added bonus it wasn't just there for no reason just for looks but it actually serves a purpose and basically what it does is it allows the hot air to escape from the light you know as cold air or outside air is being drawn in from the top you know through the fan that's on the top um it actually escapes out through those side vents so i thought that that was a pretty cool feature that the way they designed that you know really adds a great look um, but again, like I said, it serves a purpose and that was a plus for me. So one of the other features was the fan that's on the top. Again, it's another piece that I thought looked really well the way they placed it and the way they designed it. Um, but it does serve a huge purpose. I like the way the light kind of looks almost like a carbon fiber grate. You know, it kind of gives a carbon fiber look to it. Um, but again, it's a it's a it plays a huge role in keeping the light cool and and keeping the light working efficiently. You do have to clean it uh, very often. Um, dust will start to collect around the light. And so what I like to do periodically is just take a vacuum cleaner and just vacuum around the edge of the light and around the, the fan just to make sure I keep it clear and keep the debris clear. But again, another feature that I really thought added a great look to the light. So the third feature that drew my attention to this light is something that I haven't really heard many people speak about. Um, you know, I don't know if it's just a thing that gets overlooked or um, maybe it's just not that important, but it was important to me. And it's the optics lens of the light. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about the diffusers and the other third party things that you can buy for the Aqua Illumination Prime and also for the Radeon i think g4 pros the ai prime hd actually already comes with a diffuse lens um, if you take a real close look at the lens it's not that clear glass that you would normally see uh, with the normal led um, the lens itself actually already has a little diffusion to it um, and it really shows in the tank especially if you have enough of them you can really see a, a, a nice even spread of light you don't really get that disco ball effect on the sand bed where you'll see uh, with some of the other lights you can actually see the distinguished differences in color but you see a real even clean spread uh, with great shimmer so that was one of the things that really drew my attention to this light and another key feature So for mounting, just like with any light, there's multiple ways that you can do it, multiple ways that you can mount your lights to the tank. Uh, Aqua Illumination provides three different ways. They offer you the tank mount, which is the one that I went with, um, the hanging kit, and also the flex arm. Uh, the reason I went with the tank mount is just really just, again, it was for looks. I really liked the way the, the L shape looked on the tank. Um, also, I didn't want to hang anything from the ceiling. I, um, my ceilings are very high over the tank, so that would have been a long run that I would have had to, to do over the tank. So I think the tank mount for me was the best option. But again, it was really, really clean, really gave a nice feel. Um, I actually mounted mine upside down just because I wanted to run the wire over the top of the mount and around the back as opposed to under the bottom the normal way that uh, the light it was meant to be. So, you know, for me, it worked a little bit better because I, I'm able to hide the wire and I don't actually see it when I'm looking at the tank from the front. So another great feature uh, for this light and another big reason why I purchased this one and not anything else was the fact that I, it comes with its own native app. Um, so you can download an app directly from, you know, iOS or Android, whatever you use, and you literally can connect directly from your phone straight to the light. You don't need Wi-Fi. You don't need any other third party boxes or connections or anything like that. You can actually connect to the light natively um, and make your changes or whatever it is that you need to do directly to the light. 
Um, it's an added bonus that it does allow you to connect to Wi-Fi and I can control my lights when I'm away. If I'm at work and I need to, you know, turn on the lights or, you know, whatever the case may be, I can do that. I can monitor where my tank is at, you know, away from home. Uh, but if the Wi-Fi ever goes down or for whatever reason, you know, the network is out and something's not working, I can still connect natively to the light and, you know, make the changes or do whatever it is that I need to do. So that was a big plus and just the ease of operation, you know, just looking at the, the interface, the app interface, how to set your lights, how to make changes, how to set up your schedules. Um, everything is just cut and dry. Everything is just straightforward. Um, and again, it's right at your fingertips. So for setting up the light, I won't go into uh, too much detail on, on how to use the, you know, the app and programming just because there's so many other videos and I actually link a video in the description that actually helped me when I first started using the light. Um, but for the most part, everything is straightforward. You just go to your starting point. Uh, you start making your adjustments at the time that you want, you know, at the spectrum that you want. And once you're done, you just create your profile or your preset name, you save it, and then you can just select the one that you want or the one that you just created and start using it. And it's that simple. And if you ever need to make any changes, you just go to that schedule, the same schedule that you're using, make the change in real time, and then just override it and you save it again. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough of my actual lighting schedule and, and what I'm running over my reef. Um, and hopefully I can answer any questions that anyone may have. Um, and if I miss anything, please don't hesitate, drop in the comments and you know, I'll definitely answer you guys. So basically here's my schedule and um, this is what I came up with. So, uh, I actually started from the David Zaxby schedule, the one that you can download from the signature series website that I spoke about earlier. Um, I downloaded that preset and I started making adjustments from there. Um, I actually ended up very far away from that schedule and what, you know, he actually does. Um, but I did keep the up and down fluctuations of the light, how it goes up and it goes down every so often. Um, and basically, you know, you can see my peak times. You can see, you know, I don't run a lot of high light. I think the highest, this is the peak time right now, uh, where my whites are at 50% and my blues, I think the highest is 114%. Um, which is another thing that I didn't speak about that I really, really like is the fact that you can overdrive, you know, certain lights depending on how much of the another light you're using. So if you're using 90% of one light, you have another 10% that you can add to another light. So, um, you know, and that's pretty much it. So I run a, a very long photo period of a 16 hour schedule. Um, not all of it is what I call relevant light, meaning it's not really doing much because it's lower light. Um, my peak time is really only two hours, um, you know, and that's something that I'm looking at now. Um, shout out to Murphy's Aquatics. He gave me a par meter and um, I started testing my par and found out that a lot of the par readings in my tank are very low. Um, I'm talking at between 150 to 200, maybe hitting 250 par. Um, and for SPS and acros, one would think that you would need a lot more par uh, to give these corals what they need but you know for the most part i'm not having any issues with with coloration or growth um so i'm not going to go too much away from what i'm doing i am going to increase the uh, peak times of what i'm running um just for the blues and the uvs i'm going to come up with another schedule where i increase you know the length of how long the blues are on and how long the uvs are on i think i'm going to leave the whites um where they are for now and then go from there and see what happens um, but for the most part, you know, you can see my corals. I'm getting great coloration. I'm getting great growth. Um, you know, everything looks good and nothing stressed out. Um, so I think it's doing fine. I don't want to go too crazy and start chasing numbers just because I have a par meter in, in my hands that I can, you know, see what I'm running. I'm just going to kind of let it be, uh, make a few adjustments here or there and, you know, and see what happens. So here's a quick demo of my lighting schedule and, and how the lights pass over my reef. Um, I actually have my lights connected separately, um, you know, so you can, you know, set up your lights as a parent child. Um, or in my case, the way I did it is I set them all up as parents. So none of them are communicating with each other, but they're running the same schedule. Uh, and the reason I did that is because I wanted to stagger the way my whites pass over my tank. So all of my blues and all of my UVs turn on and turn off at the same time, but my whites stagger over the tank from, you know, from left to right in 30 minute intervals. So the left one will come on at 9.30 a.m. The middle one will come on at 10 a.m. And then the 
the next one over will come on at 10 30 a.m so my reason for doing this is i just you know kind of thought about the way the sun passes over the reef um you know in the wild and in nature and when you think about the you know a lot of people talk about the indirect which is the blue light that most of the corals will get you know the indirect light and as the sun passes over the reef they'll get the direct light and it'll keep moving you know and then they go back to just indirect light so that was my kind of thought process behind it don't know if it really does much for the corals i don't think it makes a difference um, but it was just something that I thought was a cool way of setting it up. And, you know, I like to have it that way. And that's pretty much it, guys. That's my lighting schedule. Uh, nothing too complicated. Very simple. Very straightforward. Um, you know, I, one of the things that I could recommend for anyone is whatever light schedule you decide to pick, you know, just kind of stick with it. You know, let it be for a while. Um, even if you don't like the way it looks, you know, the best option is just to let it be, let the corals get used to it and see what happens, you know, give them a few months, maybe three months, maybe, you know, six months, you know, depending on what you're keeping. If, if you're keeping acros, definitely just give them some time to adjust to the light. Um, and you never know what will happen. You know, I'm, I'm glad that I kind of started the tank blind, uh, without a par meter and didn't start off right away looking for a specific number, but I kind of just went to, you know, what I thought was best and, you know, based on research and just kind of let it be. Um, and it's paid off, you know, I'm, I'm running low par, but you know, the corals are happy. Um, we'll see what happens in the future. I don't think I'm going to make much adjustments, but you know, we'll see. So thanks for watching this video guys. Um, if anybody's interested in using my lighting schedule, I'll leave my email in the description below, you know, feel free to reach out to me and I'll gladly send you my presets. So thanks for watching this video guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.